You know, I'm actually filming this in the middle of the night and I'm actually quite pumped up after looking through my bank statement and credit card statement and I have things to share with you. You know, I've been making a lot of transfers here and there and these findings hopefully can help you reshape how you approach your own money because in many ways, cash is like soldiers. If you keep too much cash in a bank account, it's really just like soldiers idling in camp. They do nothing. But if you send these soldiers out in search of resources or prisoners of war or new terrain to conquer, then these soldiers are useful and these soldiers can multiply your overall force. Of course, in the course of this mission, some of them might get hurt. But this is the process of things and I'd like to share with you that I'm also in this journey. Some of my soldiers get hurt, but I'm never scared to deploy them to bring in things for my financial freedom journey. And let's roll in the intro video. Hi guys, welcome back. Without further ado, let's dive on to my own bank account statement. And I've been making a lot of transfers here and there. So it's going to get exciting. What you see in this image over here starts from 13th of January. And I've actually boxed up a few things in red are transfers to Scythe. I've showed you certain strategies whereby I've deployed towards Scythe trade. I have also deployed towards Chinese equity. In fact, I've actually increased that amount where you can see over here, I've actually added a further 2000 per week for 10 weeks. That's cause when I look back at the idea, I really liked it and risk reward wise, I think I rated it really highly. That's why I further increased it. So not only 1,000 for 50 weeks, I even have now 2,000 in addition for 10 weeks. So in purple, uh, deployment towards cryptocurrencies. I've shared before, I'm big on Ethereum. And this block is actually before I done the dollar cost averaging. You also see on top green color boxes. These are passive income sources. I have my investment costs, I have my book sales, but my YouTube income flows to my DBS, doesn't flow to my OCBC. So you don't see it actually here. What I also have later you see on top is orange active income and in black any amounts deposited towards stock brokerages. I'm actually buying stocks to build up my dividend income. So in this first page, you see that I've deployed in total 12,500 with quite a bit going towards the various portfolios. So let's move on to the second page at the bottom. Again, this is that 1000 per week deposit towards Scythe China portfolio. And right now I have this 3,500 that I've suggested in a previous video that I'm trying to use it for one whole Ethereum coin. And over here in green, you see this is another passive income source and above it, that's my active income. Then up next in green over here, $2,000, this is my rent income. So I do have quite a few passive income sources. Then up next is yet another active income source followed by some passive income. And then on the top, there are deposits towards crypto accounts. I've actually started a new one in Gemini. That's why I deposited just as a trial, $150. So all in all on this page, 11,550 has been deployed. Now let's move to page three. And what we can see over here is a continuation of my 2000 per week and 1000 per week towards the two Chinese Scythe portfolios. Then I've also passive income sources. Then on 8th of February, you see that I've actually moved 3,600 to X first and this is actually to the Gemini exchange that I mentioned just now. I'll be changing this dollar cost averaging from CoinHeckle to Gemini and I've actually increased it slightly. So 3,600 per week to purchase hopefully one Ethereum coin. And last but not least on top, that is where I've actually done stock purchases, 8,800 and 6,400 plus. Now these are two stocks that I like and I've actually mentioned before on this channel. So if you're keen to find out on them, subscribe, stay along the channel. You might be able to guess what they are eventually. But the main part is this, when I buy stocks that are sent to the CDP account, I usually buy between five to 10,000 blocks just to make it meaningful and as well as to optimize the brokerage charge. So on this page in total, 22,000 plus has been deployed. So net net over the course of the last one month, I've deployed more than $46,000. And there still remains 42,000 plus idling, as you can see at the top available balance. But today's title is how I save and invest at least 70% of my income, correct? The first thing to clarify is I did not start off with 70%. 
it was a way lower amount in my earlier working years. And at some point, when my ice cream shop folded, I had next to nothing in the bank account. I only had stocks remaining. And what I came to realize is a lot of times, we want to get the end result. We don't want to see the process. But that's a mistake actually. What we need to realize is that things take time to build. We need to go through a process and everybody's limitations are different. But maximizing it is fully your decision. So hopefully from this quick tutorial, you have some action points to take as of today. And again, if this message has helped you, smash on the like button. All in all, the first step of building towards financial freedom definitely starts with building a strong income and as well as building multiple sources of income if you can. A base income that is strong is after years of refining the work. You know, my top earning clients are doctors, are IT sales managers, are compliance managers. They earn a very good level of income because they have excelled in their work. They have focused on it. They have done all the relevant steps to get to their manager position. And it is indeed hard to save a big percentage if the income level is not high. Work on it multifaceted. It maybe starts off with income. The second step is always keep expenses tight. Try to be slow in terms of inflating it. And the best example that I can share with you is actually this, which is my Haiti Lao bill. You can see over there, two people with only spent $50, correct? And you know Haiti Lao has a good experience. And my guess is many of the tables there outspend my $50 by quite a bit. Speaking about Haiti Lao, its stock has plummeted tremendously because of restrictions in dining in. And right now it's actually trading close to its IPO price. Now, this company I do rate it pretty highly. Uh, I might be looking at its books pretty soon, so if you're keen on it, smash on subscribe so that you will get notified when it's released. My family strategy is to always manage our credit card spending. We have three main cards. Myself, I'm running the OCBC365 credit card. My wife has one 365 card herself and as well as BOC's family card. Let's start with the OCBC365 card. Over here, that's where we lock in petrol to get 5%. And the main part is that it needs a minimum spending of $800. So once we actually cross it, we actually move cards. So that actually is a reminder on how much balance we can actually spend comfortably within the month. And if we compare to the BOC family card, you realize that the dining for BOC family card is even stronger at 10%. However, there's a cap of $25. So we do actually use it for grocery shopping and when we spend on these cards usually we exceed it by a bit it could be 800 plus or even to a thousand dollars so all in all the best average is 900 dollars for the three cards that brings it to 2700 dollars for groceries dining and bills there are also expenditures in hawk center which is done by grab pay or done with cash so when i look back at accounts i think the best estimate of these various expenditures is about $800 in total. So again, $2,700 in credit cards, less away $300 which should be under the petrol category, and then about $800 for cash withdrawals and grab pay top ups. So all in all, between myself and my wife, it is $3,200, which means my half is $1,600. So this brings the total expense that I'm facing in 2022 to be closer to $5,000 per month. And that hasn't even factored in income taxes, as well as costs such as travel, which have not shown up because we're not flying anywhere. So all in all, total expenses are about 5,000 or 5,000 plus. And from a total annual income perspective, that's how I actually save more than 70% of my income. So hopefully this sharing has shed some light on what are possible steps to move ahead or to make changes to. And I promise a big rounding point, which is this. Saving up is easy. I've seen many private clients do that already. They saved up big amounts of cash. But to get to financial freedom, you need to deploy this cash effectively. And that is why the first part, which is why I lead off with, are avenues that I've been deploying towards. I'm a big believer of dollar cost averaging, using it strategically to acquire assets on a continuous basis. And once you realize you are able to save up big amounts and deploy them consistently towards assets, 
you realize that your journey towards financial freedom is shortened tremendously because you get a rate of return on your investments. So think about that and leave any questions you may have in the comment sections. And in signing off from this video, I would like to invite you to two of my previous tutorials. The first is my 14 streams of income that bring me more than 200,000 per year. The second is in 2020, my expenses in total. Check out these tutorials to get more inspiration and I'll sign off from here. Take care and goodbye.